Welcome back to the Azure Terraformer. Today, um, I've been exploring the OpenAI service uh, that I just got access to, and it's in private preview. Um, it was pretty hard to get access to it. Um, there's this form I had to fill out and all that stuff, and had to wait 10 days for somebody to approve it. So I figured this was as close to the bleeding edge as, uh, as I could get. So um, I wouldn't expect the Azure RM provider to have this resource available for me to just provision to provision this thing. So I've been looking for an opportunity to use this other Azure provider that you may not be familiar with. Um, it's called the Azure API provider. Um, and it's, it's kind of this hidden secret. Um, uh, I guess, you know, it's, I mean, I, I, I've been familiar with this for a while, but when you go to um, the Terraform registry, um, it doesn't just pop out and slap you in the face and say, hey, use me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Terraform provider uh, that, that works perfectly for Azure. But this provider is uh, unlike the Azure RM provider, which is a traditional Terraform provider that has uh, very, I, how, how would I say this, uh, tight, tightly defined schema for each resource that correlates to a resource type in Azure. Um, the Azure API uh, provider is, I, I guess, a bit more flexible in that um, there's a single resource type and that resource type has a, has a single schema, but it, the schema is generic enough that it can support any Azure resource. So in a sense, it's kind of like if you took an Azure ARM template and provided just the resource block um, and, uh, you know, and, and we're, able to, we're able to just provision individual resources at a time. So with this, with this provider, you're going to be doing a lot of JSON encoding and things like that because that's because it's it's much, much closer to what the Azure Resource Management API actually needs than the Terraform uh, Azure ARM provider, um, because the Azure ARM provider has its own kind of opinionated definition of what that schema should look like. Um, whereas the Azure API, it's pretty much just whatever ARM has. Now, the benefit of this provider is that it supports any resource under the sun. Uh, as long as you know what, what its schema is and what, what attributes it expects, you can use this thing to provision it. So that's what we're going to do today. First, I'm going to go show you where this provider lives in the Terraform registry, because uh, it is a little bit hidden. And then I'm going to go interrogate the deployment of my Azure Open API service and show you how you can use uh, the ARM templates that are deployed um, in the portal um, to go figure out how you can automate stuff using the Azure API provider um, to to automate any Terraform or to automate any Azure resource, even if it's not supported by today's Azure RM provider. So this is useful whether the resource is completely unsupported or even if parts of the resource that you really that are super super important to your your scenario are not available. So it's a helpful it's a helpful tool to have in your tool belt. Anyways, let's uh, let's go look at this provider and get it set up in our code, and uh, we'll we'll get going from there. So if I go look at providers and I look at all my providers here, it does not show up in the main list. Um, I mean, I I could probably go through the dozens and dozens of pages here. There's 63 pages it seems, or I could just say AZ API, and there it is the Azure AZ API provider, that's it. If we go look at this provider, um, we can see that there are not a lot of resources here. And that's because of the nature of the way this provider was designed. This provider, unlike the Azure RM provider, where you have hundreds of resources, different resource types, you have root resources with sub resources, um, and every resource has a corresponding data source. This provider is designed specifically to be very amorphous so that it can adapt and move to whatever is needed for the, uh, to, for the Azure resource itself. So if you go look at this, it's basically, um, you know, it, it actually works perfectly well with the Azure RM provider, sharing the credential that you specify for Azure RM and so you can use it in conjunction with the Azure RM provider. So if you, 
so this, this is perfect because there is some extra work in using the Azure API uh, provider itself. Um, and you'll see this uh, as, we, as we work on this together. It's, it's not super easy to use the Azure AP provider uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of things that are um, kind of from the ARM world. Um, and so it, it is simpler than ARM um, and it's definitely better than using the ARM resource template or the ARM uh, deployment, uh, resource deployment uh, resource within the Azure ARM provider. Um, I've done that a few times. I'm sure you have too. It's not fun. Um, you, 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 it's not a lot of fun working with, with ARM templates in Terraform. So this provides a little bit more HCL-like experience, um, but also provides that full day zero support for any Azure service under the sun. So here we go. So it's actually using the container registry um, and using a specific version. This will come up later. This is an important designation. The resource type is listed here with the at symbol and then the API version that you're using. And then a lot of the usual suspects are already here with a, just subtle differences. Um, most Azure RM resources have a resource group name, not a parent ID. Um, but for most Azure resources, the parent ID is going to be a resource group ID. Um, the location. This is a common uh, attribute on pretty much every Azure RM resource. Um, and you set it just the same. We're, we're actually using the Azure RM uh, resource here and we're having a good old time. Identity looks like a top level block. So anytime um, a resource supports user um, managed identity, whether it's system assigned, user assigned, that's gonna work pretty much the same as it does in the Azure RM provider, but it's in this common schema. And then here's where it gets interesting. We have this body block, and this is a JSON blob, and this is where um, you hit pay dirt. This is where all of the things that are custom and specific for this particular resource type, uh, in this case, we got a container registry, are gonna, are gonna be encapsulated into this block right here. So this is where um, you're gonna have to figure out what Azure ARM is expecting, and you're gonna have to do a little bit of JSON to HCL conversion to get this thing to, get this thing to look nice and pretty. Um, of course, you could just embed a huge block of JSON, but then we'd be back in the resource deployment uh, type, and it's, it's no fun managing huge blocks of JSON in, in Terraform. I, I much prefer using JSON and code to take a block of HCL, convert it to JSON, which is what the Azure ARM API needs, and, and have a good time. So what I need to do get, to get started, I'm not provisioning a container registry. I'm actually going to be provisioning um, the Azure Open API uh, resource. Um, but I do want to go just grab my configuration here. I'm, I'm going to get the required providers block and the provider, and I'm going to put that into my code. So here is my uh, existing Azure RM configuration. I'm just going to go drop this in here and kind of do a merge function here. So I need my Azure API provider added to my required providers here. And let's now we can get rid of the duplicate block. And I do need to have the Azure, a, Azure AZ API. I like that AZ, AZ API provider block defined here right alongside my Azure RM provider. Um, and so now I'm ready to go. So I've already got a resource group declared. Um, my open API, my open AI resource is going to get provisioned into East US. So I've got a resource group ready to go. I just need to go figure out how I'm going to provision this thing. So in my first open API, <laughs> I keep saying open API, um, my first open AI uh, video, I, I actually deployed through the portal. And so I went and I snagged the deployment template out of the portal, uh, complete with my parameters so that we can go interrogate this uh, together um, in this video. And so here, this is, this is the entire ARM template in all its verbose glory of how to provision an Azure uh, cognitive, an Azure open API, an Azure AI resource. Um, and so we're actually going to get a pretty good 
terraform versus arm comparison to see the differences in terms of verbosity of the two approaches. So right off the bat, now this isn't exactly a fair approach because this is a, a deployment, right? Um, you, you could kind of clean this up a little bit, um, but it, it's pretty much what you're, what you're after. So this is provisioning um, a virtual network. Now in the portal, when I provisioned my open AI resource, it actually asked me, do you want to use internal? Do you want to use an external network? Um, pr provide me a virtual network um, or not. And so th they have this built in here, this logic, if, if you specified a virtual network, it's going to go try and like set up that stuff. Um, so we don't need, basically long story short, we don't need this at all. This is not what we're after. Now this is what we're after. So we are going to need to bring over the, uh, th this type here. And let me, let me just go pop this over to the side. Okay, so I've got my ARM template that was deployed over on the side and I've got my Terraform code over here. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna declare an Azure API resource. So I'm gonna start off resource. Now, the first attribute that it wants is it wants a type. And so the type I can grab here, cognitive services. This is actually an existing type. Uh, I've, I've used this previously um, to, to do things like um, speech to text and computer vision and stuff like that. And if you remember, the Azure API resource requires to have the API version added with a, with a little amp, amp with a little at sign, and then the version um, the version number there. Now I'm going to put in the name, which is I'm going to call this I don't know what, and then I need the parent ID which is going to be uh, just reference from my Azure RM resource group. And then the location, I'm also going to pull from the resource group. And now the fun part, the body. So the body is going to be, I'm going to use JSON and code. And inside here, I need to have an HCL object that matches the schema of my resource. So now looking at this resource, this, this is the content that I need in there. And then inside our properties object, let me just blow out the structure here. Okay, so the structure is in place. Now we just got to go figure out what all these crazy JSON based um, expressions are trying to do. So it looks like we're just, we're calling a two lower method on the parameters, which is the name for this custom subdomain. So we actually just need to copy pasta the name of our resource, which I'm, you know, I, I don't like copy pasta. So I'm just going to declare a locals and we'll reference it on our custom subdomain name. Um, that would be kind of weird if like you could actually change that. Um, but uh, I think by default, it's always the resource name. Now public network access. So if parameter virtual network type equals internal, so if you're going to use an internal network, you want public network access to be disabled. So I'm not doing public, like I'm not doing internal networks. So I want public network access enabled. Now the default action. So what we're going to look at here, if the virtual network type is external, then the default action should be deny. So that's, that's what I want. I want deny. And now I actually got the type wrong on these virtual network rules. If virtual network type is external, then do a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, I don't want that. So I just need an array. So they're using a JSON encode function to create an empty array. I can just, you know, create an empty array in HCL and my JSON encode is going to be happening up here. So I should be good. So there we go. There you have it. So I took this nasty block of JSON and I converted it into this beautiful block of HCL, um, which I slam into the Azure API resource using my body, my, my JSON encode uh, function to encode this beautiful block of HCL uh, into, into what Azure ARM is after.
So there we go. So let's uh, let's go, you know, run this. Looks good. Let's get this thing deployed. A few moments later. Oh, oh well, look at that. It finally completed. How wonderful it is. Uh, cool. So there we go. So we went through how to provision an OpenAI cognitive services account um, that's currently in, in private preview using the Azure API resource. And uh, the tragedy of this whole endeavor, which it was a great exercise, you know, I've, I've been meaning to get around to using the Azure API provider, um, but uh, the, the great tragedy of this is there actually is a, a resource in the Azure RM provider and it works with the open API uh, cognitive account. So didn't have to go through all this, I guess. Um, but anyways, I think it's good for you to be aware um, of this provider because it may come in handy if there are certain features or certain resources that, that don't have a, an official resource in the Azure RM provider. This is a great fallback mechanism other than having to provision an ARM template using Terraform, which no, nobody likes to do that. It's like pulling teeth. Anyways, hope you like this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a like, and I hope you're enjoying my channel. Please subscribe and ring that bell when you do so that you can know when my next video drops. Always love getting feedback. Please let me know what you'd like to see me do, what uh, problems you're working with, and you know, and maybe I'll tackle that topic in a future episode. That's it for today. This is the Azure Terraformer signing off.